This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It is your Tuesday. It's going to be an unusually warm one today. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. It's February 2nd as well. Groundhog Day. Groundhog you know? Day. Yeah. <laughs> and right now at 630, the Democratic Party says it is too close to call, but Hillary Clinton's campaign is claiming victory from Iowa this morning. Donald Trump is headed to New Hampshire. I'm Jacqueline Paula Castro. How his supporters feel after his second place caucus win. The Kentucky Wildcats on the road again tonight, but they're back in conference play to take on Tennessee. Got a wind advisory going into effect later on this afternoon, off into the evening and overnight hours. Gusty winds 30 to 40 miles per hour already feeling those winds this morning, pumping in some much milder air. I'll show you how high we go with those temperatures and that severe weather threat coming up. Okay, we'll see you in a few, and we thank you. The focus of the 2016 presidential campaign is now shifting to New Hampshire following last night's historic Iowa caucuses. The race between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders is extremely close. The Clinton campaign is declaring victory in the Iowa Democratic caucuses. Clinton captured 22 delegates, Sanders 21, but there's still one delegate left to be decided. Ted Cruz won the Republican Iowa caucuses, meaning he will collect eight delegates to the Republican National Convention. And Trump came in second place in the caucuses last night, and he told voters he is honored to be the runner-up. WKYT's Jacqueline Policastro brings us the story of the loyal Trump supporters that he'll be leaving behind in Iowa. Donald Trump supporters say they think he can still win the nomination and the election. Donald Trump professed his love to this Iowa Thank crowd you. after his second place finish in the Iowa caucus. Thank you very much. I love you people. I love you people. Thank you. Voters here wearing their support blazed across their chests, saying they aren't losing faith in their candidate. In his heart, he knows that he can get things done, and I don't know how he's going to do it, but I believe that he believes that he can, and that's good enough for me. An independent voter turned Trump Republican. You know, we got a long ways to go to the White House. He still can win that. And a Trump caucus spokeswoman who's proud of her pick. It won't change how I feel, and I still believe that he has a very good chance of being our next president. Trump is headed straight to New Hampshire, coming off his second place caucus finish. Reporting in Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Jacqueline Policastro. Kentucky U.S. Senator Rand Paul finished fifth in last night's Iowa caucus. He says he is staying in the race. Two candidates are dropping out of the presidential race, Republican Mike Huckabee and Democrat Martin O'Malley. A federal grand jury has subpoenaed records for Kentucky Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes' last two campaigns. Grimes' attorney says she is not the target of the investigation. The grand jury subpoena relates to finances of her 2014 U.S. Senate campaign and her 2015 Secretary of state campaign. The grand jury also subpoenaed records of her father, Jerry Lundergan, and two of his companies. Firefighters are still trying to figure out what caused that massive fire over the weekend at the Bluegrass Stockyards in Lexington. Now they're asking for the public's help. WKOT's Mark Barber is live at the stockyards where crews are still on scene, we understand. Good morning, Rebecca. They're asking for the public's help this morning because it has been more than 60 hours since that massive fire destroyed the Bluegrass Stockyards, and they still do not know where the fire started. So this morning, they're asking anyone who has pictures or video of the fire before crews got to the scene on Saturday to email them to them on their arson tip line. Now, investigators are stressing that they do not think that this fire was started on purpose. However, they are hoping that a tip from the public will help them figure out where the fire started, and from there, they can determine how it started. The governor and the agriculture commissioner visited the stockyards yesterday to take a very close look at the damage. The commissioner said his father worked here when he was growing up, so the loss of the stockyards is deeply personal for him. Saturday's devastating three alarm fire also destroyed five other businesses. It took more than 120 firefighters to keep it from spreading any farther. In all, the fire destroyed 10 acres of property, making this the worst fire that the city has seen in more than 30 years. Firefighters want to move forward with their investigation, but they say they will need your help. Again, they're asking anyone who has any pictures or video of this massive stockyards fire before crews got here on Saturday to email them. You can see that email address there on the bottom of your screen, arsontips at lexingtonky.gov. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. 
All right. Thanks so much, Mark. We are tracking a death investigation at a Central Kentucky stockyard. State police went to the Washington County Livestock Center in Springfield for a reported shooting. They found an injured man there who later died at the hospital. No other details have been released. Keep checking WKYT.com for updates. A bill that would change Kentucky's informed consent law for abortions has been sent to the governor's desk for approval. WKYT's Mike Byer joins us from the live desk now to explain what this new law would mean. Kentucky lawmakers have approved a bill allowing real-time video consultations between doctors and women as an option to fulfill informed consent requirements before getting an abortion. By a 33-5 to 5 vote, the Kentucky Senate gave final approval Monday afternoon to Senate Bo Bill 4, which amends Kentucky's informed consent law. The bill now goes to the desk of Governor Matt Bevin. For years, Kentucky law has required women to meet with a doctor before having an abortion. But supporters of the bill say some doctors have circumvented that requirement by ha having patients listen to a recorded message on the phone with no interaction. The Senate initially voted to require patients to meet with doctors in person at least 24 hours before an abortion. The House amended the bill to allow real-time video consultations called visual telehealth services and the amended wording as an option to fulfill informed consent requirements. Now, a spokesperson for the governor recently told our news partner, the Lexington Herald Leader, that Governor Bevin is expected to sign the bill. At the live desk, Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, thank you. It is 6.36 on WKYT. And new this morning, a man is in jail after police say he gave a woman a lethal dose of heroin. Richmond police arrested Christopher Creamer. According to the Richmond Register, the victim was found unresponsive in a home on Claiborne Drive. Two children, ages one and two, were found alone upstairs. Police say the victim received an emergency protective order against Creamer the day before. Also new this morning, a woman is facing drug charges in Berea after police say she hid a meth pipe inside a biscuit. The Richmond Register says police pulled over a car at the Berea Walmart for excessive window tinting, and police say Courtney Eaton was nervous and asked if she could finish eating a sausage biscuit before cooperating. They say she had an active warrant, and when she was arrested, police found a meth pipe and marijuana stuffed inside the biscuit. A Harlan County man is accused of torturing his dog. Police say they went to Ryan Harris's home after getting a tip that the dog was seriously injured. They say that that dog had an infected leg and don't know how the dog was injured, but they did charge Harris with animal torture because he didn't try to get his pet help. The dog is now with a vet but may have to uh, lose that infected leg. A Spencer County teenager is lucky to be alive thanks to a Central Kentucky police officer. While on his way home from work, Shelbyville officer Toby Lewis says he noticed something off Shelbyville Road in Spencer County. He pulled over and saw a car on its side in a creek. Officer Lewis called 911, then walked down to the car. And the sunroof is open about an inch. And I start hearing screaming, help me. And then I seen bloody fingers come up to the sunroof. Police say 17-year-old Taylor Wilson was in the wrecked car. Emergency crews had to use the jaws of life to free her. Taylor had a broken injury or a head injury and broken ribs, but police say she is expected to recover. Officer Lewis says he normally doesn't take that road home, but for some reason he decided to that night. Probably a good thing. Uh, sounds like it turned out well that he did, yes. Yes, and one of the key tenants of Center Point is actually using social media to vent his frustration about the downtown Lexington project. Now, Jeff Ruby took to Twitter to say that no city should have an eyesore in the heart of downtown for this long. Ruby wants to put a steakhouse in Center Point. Last month, the city gave Center Point's new developers a 30-day extension to begin work at the site. That extension expires this Friday. The city says it is waiting for a consultant's report about whether moving City Hall to Center Point is a good use of taxpayers' money. Coming off a tough overtime loss at Kansas, the Kentucky Wildcats on the road again tonight. Hoping to get back to the winning ways, but they're getting into SEC action again. The Cats will take on the Tennessee Volunteers tonight. Tennessee is just 10 and 11 in Rick Barnes' first season and coming off back-to-back -back losses to Alabama and TCU. UK coach John Calipari looking for someone to take the burden off Tyler Eulis, Jamal Murray, and Isaiah Briscoe. Eulis played every minute of UK. UK's overtime loss at Kansas. It's the Cats versus the Vols tonight at Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville, and it will tip off at 7 o'clock on ESPN. Should be a good game. Yeah, let's check how to see how traffic is moving out there this morning. And here's Officer Don with a check on live drive traffic. Good morning, Don.
Good morning. Couple of things. It looks like police are running radar on I-75 northbound now around the 111. So be careful approaching the southern split this morning. Uh, but as we get a live look at Lexington traffic flow, you can see no major bottlenecks to deal with just yet. Things are pretty light. Even inbound Leestown Road from Master Sensation down to the Circle uh, looks steady. And of course, closer to downtown, a little red popping up there, especially at Richmond Road approaching the Circle in that left turn lane. Drive times from Nicholasville, 14 minutes. From Georgetown, 18. From Paris, we'll take 19. And it's 31 minutes across the Clays Ferry Bridge toward Lexington coming in from Richmond. We'll keep you up to date. Okay. Now back to the studio. We know you will, Don, and we thank you so much. And it is 6:40 on WKYT this morning, and great to have you along on this Tuesday. It's one of the biggest reasons people watch the Super Bowl next to the game itself, of course. A sneak peek at some of the Super Bowl ads after weather. Yeah, we have a big system heading our direction. Obviously, that severe weather threat is what we're going to be focusing in on. But what about before the severe weather? We're talking about an extremely nice day. On all that coming up next. The temperatures when I walked in this morning, we were actually in the 30s for most locations. Now we're in the 40s. Sun's not even up yet. How do you actually do that? How do you rise temperatures without the sun coming up? Well, you get those winds coming in from the south and southwest. And boy, does it pumping in some milder air. Not a bad feeling outside at this moment. Average for this time of year is 42 degrees in the afternoon. We're already right at that. So a pretty calm and dry start to the day. But those temperatures, boy, they'll be increasing very rapidly. So you'll see a, a quick jump of temperatures through the day, especially afternoon as those gusty winds kick up 30 to 40 miles per hour. Keep in mind, teachers, you'll want to go outside today. Take the kids outside today. The reason being because tomorrow you might not be able to do that uh, for some locations. And then the following days are going to be pretty chilly. So today's probably your day to do that. Just know that those gusts pretty strong there up on the jungle gym. Yeah, you better keep an eye out on them. But still dry afternoon. I'll give it a 20% chance that we actually see a stray shower during the afternoon hours. It's really the evening and night that we start to see these storms move on in. You're going to be strong. There's no doubt about that. A lot of lightning will be with these and also some strong gusty winds. But also, we're looking at the damaging wind threat too. So the severe weather threat is along that. 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. is your best time frame for severe storms. Let's break it down even further than that. I-64 corridor and a little bit west than that, 6 p.m. to about 9 p.m. So you're getting off into the evening hours back well toward the west. That's I-65. Not a lot of people actually pick us up over there. We still have some viewers, but for the most part, it's this area and this area that you start to see the viewership pick up. And you can see 9 p.m. To midnight. Boy, it's going to be late in the evening off into the night that we actually see these storms roll through. This is the arrival time. Lexington, Richmond, I'd lean more toward the 10 p.m. to midnight. Uh, Frankfurt, more toward the 9 to 11 p.m. Northbound, same story. Go into uh, Somerset, London. That's more toward midnight that you actually see those storms. And then after midnight, I would see those making their way over toward the far east. Portions of Kentucky. So there's a lot going on later on this evening. Current traffic, things look pretty good as we're rolling across town. Not seeing any issues whatsoever. Let's check out your seven day forecast. Let me break it down for you. So you know the timing on this. Damaging winds are going to be your main threat. And it looks like that'll go in through tomorrow morning. Now I would say it moves out about 7 to 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, but then those temperatures slowly drop. So we'll be upper 40s, lower 50s tomorrow afternoon. Afternoon looks pretty dry. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday look dry, and you'll see those temperatures rebound from the 30s there on Thursday and Friday to the 40s for the weekend, and then it drops back down there on Monday and into next week. There's a big blast of cold air next week, so if you're trying to get outside and knock some things out before we start to see some colder air sweep on in, probably today's a good time or the weekend, but the weekend, a lot going on this weekend with some events and also Obviously, the Super Bowl yeah. is going on later on. Yeah, this that weekend. little thing. Yeah. <laughs> Why can't every day be 70 in February? Yeah, I know, right? man. Yeah. It's so yeah. nice, so nice. But then here come the storms. Yeah, right. Yep. Well, we'll a lot more to get through. Spring will get here. Time this morning is 647. And with the Super Bowl 50 now just days away, advertisers digging deep to come up with winning ads. Mountain Dew is getting back into the Super Bowl advertising game, but what they plan to do could cause a lot of viewers to scratch their heads. The soft drink giant tweeted brief videos of the commercial's star 
It's a creature that uh, looks like a mix of a baby, a monkey, a horse, and a space alien. <laughs> Snickers ad may also confuse viewers. A teaser for that ad shows what appears to be Hollywood icon Marilyn Monroe serenading the Super Bowl on its 50th birthday. But things uh, don't go as expected in that. CBS is charging about $5 million, by the way, for a 30-second spot in this year's Super Bowl. And uh, it's going to be interesting. The uh, second uh, tier ads uh, uh, running at high rates as well during Super Bowl 50. All of that coming up on Sunday. The Marilyn Monroe one looks a little weird. It makes me kind of anxious. <laughs> kind of very strange. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's to be maybe that's what they're going to for. To be memorable. I, I hope right? they're just not sad. Like, was it last year where all the ads Some were so more, yeah. depressing? Yeah, there've been years like that. Yeah. But uh, catch it all here on WKYT coming up this Sunday. Our time right now is 6:48. We have more news. Stay with us. Coming up, a close call for Democrats and a major upset in the GOP race for president. We talk with Ted Cruz after he wins in Iowa. Plus, we report from Brazil on the tiniest victims of the Zika virus epidemic. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning, next. Welcome back. The time is 6.51. Still to come strategies and tips for potential home buyers. Yeah, how to determine your budget, how to prepare for the mortgage loan process, that, and of course, all of the updates from the Iowa caucus coming up on CBS This Morning, just a few minutes away at 7. Well, a bill that would change Kentucky's informed consent law is headed to the governor's desk. In a 33 to 5 vote, the state Senate gave final approval to the House passed bill yesterday. It would allow for women seeking an abortion to consent to a procedure through real-time video conferencing. Currently, Kentucky law requires conferencing face-to-face. -face. The ACLU of Kentucky said in a statement that Governor Bevan would, quote, would be wise to veto the bill. However, a spokesperson for the governor is telling our partners at the Herald Leader that he will sign it. Well, investigators are turning to the public for help to figure out the cause of Saturday's massive fire at Lexington's Bluegrass Stockyards. Firefighters say they do not suspect arson at this point. They're asking anyone who has pictures or videos before the first crews arrived at the fire to send those in. Three days after the fire started, crews are still on the scene this morning. Bernie Sanders says that he is taking away a big thumbs up from the Iowa caucuses. He says his razor thin contest with Hillary Clinton means his campaign for the Democratic presidential nomination can ultimately prevail. Of course, uh, Clinton is claiming victory this morning. On the Republican side, Ted Cruz got a boost from aging Donald Trump, while Marco Rubio finished a strong third. The next stop for both parties is the New Hampshire primary. The CDC is adding more tropical destinations to a list of countries that pregnant women should avoid because of the Zika virus outbreak. The development comes as officials with the World Health Organization declared the virus an international emergency. The virus has been linked to a rare birth defect in thousands of babies, mostly in South America. The new travel warning includes Costa Rica and Nicaragua. Well, the NFL turned its traditional media day into a prime time opening night for the Super Bowl. It is the 50th anniversary of the big game. The time to really go big or go home is what they say about this one. Both teams took center stage, soaking in the festivities. The NFL wanted to keep the event relatively calm. The Broncos. Von Miller was expected to be put on a show, but instead he came out focused. It's all about the team. It's all about um, it's all about putting the focus on my teammates and, and Super Bowl 50 coming up. Well, both teams go back to practicing today ahead of the big game. You can watch Super Bowl 50 this Sunday right here on WKYT. Well, it is a party in Punxsutawney. The handlers of Pennsylvania's most famous groundhog are set to predict whether he will, whether we will have a spring-like early uh, weather or have to suffer through the end of winter through six more weeks. Members of Punxsutawney Phil's top hat-wearing inner circle plan to reveal their forecast at sunrise just before 7.30 this morning. Phil almost always sees his shadow and has a 39% accuracy rate. <laughs> They have a lot of fun with it, no doubt yeah. about it. You see, I mean, they make an event of it, as you see there in Punxsutawney, with uh, really a festival on the Groundhog Day morning. So we'll know in just a few minutes. Our time right now is coming up on 6.55. We have all the latest for you at WKYT.com. It is a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day, ahead of potentially strong storms arriving tonight. Micah says that will follow today's high of near 70 degrees. As we've mentioned, Lexington firefighters are asking for the public's help now and giving them any information or 
are pictures from the scene of the Bluegrass Stockyards fire before the fire engines could get to the scene. We have more information online if you think you might be able to help. Also trending this morning, restaurant owner Jeff Ruby took to Twitter to vent about the Centerpoint project in downtown Lexington. He said no city should have an unsightly eyesore like this displayed in the heart of its downtown for this long. Ruby then used the hashtag shameful. Check out our story on that, including an approaching deadline for developers. Kentucky will be looking for a win in Knoxville tonight as the Cats take on the Vols. Kentucky.com's Jerry Tipton looks ahead as Coach Cal says he needs a four-guard rotation. Should be an interesting game down at Thompson Bowling Arena. We are updating all of the storylines out of the Iowa caucuses. Ted Cruz wins on the Republican side, virtual tie on the Democratic side, and a couple of candidates are leaving the race. CBS This Morning will have full reports and analysis coming up right here at 7 and we'll have local updates. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or Instagram and for the latest anytime WKYT.com. The about a 20% chance of rain late in the afternoon, but it's the evening and nighttime hours you start to see these storms move through. Here is your arrival time. Guys, pay attention to the screen. This is what you want to know before you take off this morning. I-65 corridor back toward the west, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. You get across the I-75 corridor. That takes you from Lexington, Georgetown, up toward Williamstown, down back toward Richmond, all the way to London, Corbin, Somerset, Danville, those areas. You're looking at 9 p.m. to about midnight, and then after midnight is for far east and southeastern areas. If you're looking for the best chance of severe weather, it's going to be I-75 and back toward the west. That's the best opportunity for severe weather. Okay. Right. Everybody be alert to that. After the game, I guess, right? right. <laughs> Nobody's more up to date than you to start your day. Thank you for being with us on WKYT. Have a great day.